Hey, welcome back, everybody. Happy Saturday evening. Hopefully we had a wonderful start to the weekend out there and hopefully getting some nicer weather, depending on where you're at. Now, for a lot of folks, unfortunately, uh, it is not so nice out there as we do have some thunderstorms working on through. But for other folks, we do actually have some nicer uh, kind of drier air working on in and making it feel a little bit more like fall. So uh, kind of a mixed bag out there. Now, uh, tonight's video, like yesterday's video during the evening, is going to be completely focused on the tropics and what is likely to become Hurricane, maybe even major Hurricane Ernesto, uh, into this coming week and uh, the potential impacts that could bring to the islands in the uh, excuse me into the Caribbean, uh, potentially into the Bahamas, and maybe on down the road into Atlanta, Canada, and cannot rule out East Coast impacts into the United States. So. I'm going to be following a lot here with this storm system, and if you're new here, uh, definitely subscribe, like the video, comment, let me know uh, where you're watching from and kind of what you're seeing out there right now in your neck of the woods. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into things because, again, a uh, pretty active scene out there right now. So, uh, starting again, just kind of big picture here, we've got a couple things ongoing that are going to be pretty important for the forecast here in the long run. Now, the big one, uh, this is, again, an open tropical wave, now designated an invest by the National Hurricane Center. Uh, so that is what could develop into Ernesto, which is the next name on the list. Um, another thing I want to point out here is this big upper level low up into northern Canada. Uh, now that upper level low could eventually, uh, or I will just go ahead and say will eventually, play pretty big impacts on down the road in the future track of Ernesto. Uh, so we'll be watching that as well. We also have high pressure kind of centered over uh, the Atlantic right now, the Bermuda High in full swing, and between uh, the um, troughing that's going to happen in the United States with that upper level low, high pressure out into the Atlantic, and then Ernesto, all three of those are going to kind of play a big role in what weather we see on down the road. So that's the big picture right now. If we kind of zoom things on a little bit more here, uh, just into Ernesto, as well as a new uh, kind of wave coming off of Africa here, where if we look at satellite, again, this is Ernesto, kind of this, or excuse me, I keep saying Ernesto, uh, it will be Ernesto here soon enough, but this is an invest currently, uh, again, just kind of sitting out here, getting better organized, has continued to organize over the past couple of days, uh, and will continue to do so throughout the rest of this weekend, and likely get named uh, either Monday or Tuesday, in fact, cannot even completely rule out it getting named sometime late tomorrow, but uh, probably early next week is when the excuse me is going to be the most likely time uh, for that name to come. Now behind it, another big wave coming off of Africa. Uh, this one also could potentially develop on down the road. Nothing outlined from the NHC right now, but again, it's that time of the year. Anytime we get one of these big, robust waves to roll off Africa, we've got to watch it for potential development. So uh, again, things are getting active out there. We're getting closer to peak hurricane season, although still a month away. So. Uh, you know, you're probably thinking it's been a pretty active tropic season so far between uh, Barrel, Debbie, and, uh, you know, now potential Ernesto. Uh, well, we're just now really kind of scratching the surface here. So latest from the National Hurricane Center. Here we go again. Now a high chance of development from this invest. 40% uh, chance within the next 48 hours. So like I said, could develop tomorrow or Monday, but very high 80% chance of development uh, between now and next weekend. Now, where that development happens will be important for the storm and its overall track. Uh, but again, it could happen anytime now up to, uh, you know, somewhere near the uh, Hispaniola area, Puerto Rico, or the Lesser Antilles. Now, my personal thought is that this is probably going to develop before it gets to any of these islands. Uh, already looking pretty healthy on satellite. And again, we'll probably continue uh, that strengthening and organization trend here in the long run which we'll get it to that name again, E, which is Ernesto, which uh, you're going to be tired of me uh, saying that name by the end of this video. I can just about guarantee you. All right, let's take a look at some model guidance. So we'll take a look at the two big models, the GFS and the European, and then we'll take a look at some steering currents, some ensembles, some spaghetti models, which we now have available for the storm in terms of track and intensity. Uh, and then we'll take a look at some other potential tropical development on down the road after this one. So again, we'll start with the GFS. Here we go. We'll move this ahead right into uh, this coming Monday. Uh, and here we go. We've got a pretty feisty little tropical wave here getting close to the Antilles, kind of right about the middle of them. Uh, and again, beginning to develop into a named tropical system Monday afternoon on the latest GFS. Now, uh, we bring this further ahead into time into Tuesday morning. Um, and this would even be Tuesday afternoon for the islands, Tuesday morning for East Coast. Uh, we've got a landfalling uh, tropical storm here into the northern Antilles, and you'll notice heavy rainfall here uh, into the kind of middle of the islands here. Also some gusty winds, rough seas, uh, normal kind of tropical storm impacts that you would see. So 
Um, not off the charts for those areas, but then you're watching in Hispaniola and Puerto Rico and you're saying, well, uh, I definitely don't like the look of a strengthening tropical system moving through islands even further east than me. And unfortunately, the GFS kind of really strengthens the storm. And here we go. Gets this into overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Uh, we've got a strong hurricane passing just south of Puerto Rico uh, again in this time frame. So uh, this is not that far out today. Again, it is Saturday. I'm recording this Saturday evening. You know, it's about to be Sunday, and this is Tuesday going into Wednesday. So within a five-day time frame here, uh, we very easily could have a hurricane. I wouldn't rule out a major hurricane uh, in the Caribbean. Now, uh, on the latest run of the GFS, this does miss Puerto Rico. However, this is only one operational run. So we'll look at the ensembles and all and the spaghetti models. Uh, but uh, because the storm stays south, again, it stays in a, a favorable environment, avoids land interaction, and continues strengthening all the way up until a landfall into the Dominican Republic uh, during the overnight of Wednesday and into Thursday here. Again, as a strong hurricane, probably uh, even a major hurricane here in that ballpark. So, um, you know, this is a, a big time model run for you folks in Hispaniola, one we're going to want to watch. And again, this is less than a week away, about five days or so. Uh, so definitely one we're gonna we're gonna need to keep an eye on now uh, because the storm does hit Hispaniola. What happens next is it gets shredded apart a little bit and uh, gets kind of uh, all kind of discombobulated as they often do when they hit the islands. Now, if this is something that happens, this could really complicate the forecast for areas on down the road through the East Coast, Atlantic Canada, the Bahamas, Bermuda. Uh, you might be wondering, well, wouldn't it just be a good thing that the storm gets weakened? Yeah, obviously it would, especially for those folks in the southern Bahamas who uh, would have, uh, you know, they'd be the next on the, uh, I guess, stepping stool here in the uh, playbook. But um, unfortunately, what happens oftentimes when these storms kind of get shredded apart is the center of, uh, you know, the center of low pressure at the surface kind of reforms and moves around, which could play havoc on the track, and it could even potentially pull it further uh, towards uh, Cuba or maybe the United States on down the road. Now, if the storm completely misses Hispaniola, uh, kind of shoots the gap here, or maybe even stays completely north altogether, uh, then it's more likely to just easily curve out to sea. But again, the storm, uh, you know, could mess with its uh, low-level center, and because of that, then moves a little bit further east through the Bahamas, uh, but then eventually does re-strengthen into, once again, a major hurricane kind of in the Bermuda Triangle, if you will, here. Uh, going into Saturday about a week from now. So again, kind of between Florida, the Bahamas, and Bermuda, and then eventually hooking it northbound and getting somewhere between the United States and the island of Bermuda uh, going into next Sunday. So again, about seven, eight days out from now, uh, we take a look at it now into you know the northern Atlantic, and we're watching the northeast and Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. Uh, well, here we go. The storm doesn't really hook it that far out to sea, uh, and just kind of hooks it north again as a strong hurricane and even eventually uh, gets kind of pulled back a little bit and we've got a strong area of low pressure um, whether that be a hurricane or extra tropical low either way it's a strong storm here uh, in about uh, seven to ten days in between new england and nova scotia and then again impacts you folks up into those regions so um, I don't show you this model run to tell you this is exactly what's going to happen, but I think it's a very real possibility, and I'll show you why when we look at these steering currents. Again, I know most of the ensembles right now show the storm uh, curving out to sea, and that is still the most likely scenario, uh, but it is absolutely not a definite scenario. In fact, I'd only give a complete out-to-sea forecast that is after the islands in the Caribbean uh, about a 60, maybe 70% shot, but I think uh, Atlantic Canada at the very least uh, you're at a good 30, maybe even 40% chance of seeing some impacts out of, again, what would be Ernesto, and then you folks in Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and the uh, Antilles, a much higher shot, really, no matter what, you're going to see impacts, and uh, here's why. Here's another major global model, the European model, uh, shows a very similar story. Now, this is Monday on the European. You'll notice um, the European is delayed in developing the storm. The GFS does it much quicker, keeps the storm much further south. The latest European... Uh, again, is slower to development. Now, uh, the European and the GFS did the same thing with Debbie. The uh, GFS developed it much quicker in the Gulf and had uh, basically what ended up happening, a strong tropical storm to a weak hurricane making landfall. The European had really almost just an open tropical wave. So with the last storm, the GFS won with intensity, and I'm willing to bet with this one, it's probably going to do the same. Uh, again, I showed you satellite imagery. We've already got a pretty uh, healthy looking wave out there. So uh, here we go, though, with the European. Again, track is similar, but further north than the GFS. Now, here's Tuesday afternoon of this coming week. We've got impacts through the Antilles, but mainly just a lot of rain and some rough seas 
Uh, other than that, nothing, you know, too rough. Um, now, after that, the uh, European moves towards Puerto Rico, but to the north. So the GFS was to the south of Puerto Rico. The European is to the north of Puerto Rico. Uh, so again, still going to need to figure that out. But uh, the European is much weaker. Again, uh, a tropical storm here. Not even that strong of a tropical storm uh, going into this Wednesday morning. Now, after that, then the European gets on the strengthening train, gets this back uh, down towards hurricane levels of pressure, uh, but then completely misses Hispaniola and the Bahamas for the most part, uh, but then hooks it up north near Bermuda. In fact, a major hurricane here just to the uh, east of Bermuda. So the GFS at this point in time was somewhere over here. The European is over here. So you'll notice a pretty big spread in our uh, global models here. And by the time we get up towards the North Atlantic, that brings really big uh, spread in the models in the long run. And then the European Again, almost uh, similar to the GFS, does hook it a little bit more north and east for a second, uh, but then curves it back to uh, uh, excuse me, then curves it back out to sea. Sorry, uh, tongue tied there. Uh, there in about seven to ten days. So different outputs from the models, but uh, I'll show you why this is going to be a bit of a difficult forecast, and it all comes down to these upper level steering patterns, uh, and uh, this is going to be crucial again in where Ernesto goes. So we back this up just a little bit. We'll get this to this uh, Monday and actually we'll bring this actually even into this coming Tuesday. Uh, so this is the um, 13th of August. Again, only a couple days from now. Here is what would be Ernesto. Uh, and notice the players on the field. High pressure here, high pressure into the Hudson uh, Bay, and then a trough over Eastern Atlantic Canada. And I'll redraw that trough. It's not a very good placement. Uh, trough axis here. Uh, and then a trough over here into uh, the Northeastern United States and into Atlantic Canada. So if we draw out what wants to happen here, this is going to push wind that way. Uh, this is going to push wind this way. And then this is going to push wind this way. So uh, what happens with that trough is we kind of get a break in the steering currents. And what that's going to do is try to pull Ernesto northward, uh, especially if it's, um, you know, a little more organized or if the center of low forms a little bit further north, uh, kind of like the European did. That's going to want to shoot the gap here uh, up towards that trough. It's kind of like an exit ramp on the interstate, if you will. Uh, and then that's what happens. Here we go. That trough picks up the storm. But what happens here is the trough kind of sits there for a little bit. And what could happen potentially is this high pressure up into the Hudson Bay could try to move back out over into the Atlantic, block the storm, and then potentially push it back inland uh, towards Atlantic Canada or the United States. Or potentially what you'll also notice here is we have another trough developing over the eastern half of the country that may try to pull the storm inward as well. Oftentimes when these uh, troughs interact with these storms, uh, it kind of gets pulled into the trough a little bit. So uh, a couple different scenarios that could keep this from having a clean exit out to sea. And that's why I'm, again, very cautiously optimistic with the current out to sea uh, forecast for most of the models. So I'm completely right off the potential that this storm could get pretty close to the east coast of the United States or at the bare minimum uh, into Atlantic Canada. Now, also, uh, there is a possibility that, again, the storm gets kind of shredded over Hispaniola or Puerto Rico. Uh, and then the low level uh, kind of struggles to form and then, you know, just kind of continues riding uh, generally westbound and then could maybe even end up in the Gulf of Mexico. Now there's uh, that possibility as well. Uh, so a lot of different options we need to continue to watch here uh, and our ensembles. Again, we've got some different possibilities. So uh, looking at the latest GFS and its ensemble members, again, we feel confident up to the point of about Puerto Rico. Uh, this is going to likely move through the northern Lesser Antilles. Personally, I think as a tropical storm and maybe even a hurricane, don't rule it out. Uh, and then even stronger hurricane potential towards Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. Now, after that, that's where things get dicey. You'll notice some European, or excuse me, GFS members uh, do kind of keep this weaker and thus move it closer towards the United States, then re-strengthen it near the Gulf or Southeast coastline. Other members, again, most of them pull this north pretty quickly, uh, but you'll notice some of the members do try to pull this back up near Atlantic Canada or the United States. So, um, you know, we're going to watch the trends here to see how these members evolve over time, but uh, just know that it's not a super easy exit out to sea. Now, it is an option. It is probably the most likely option right now that this does curve back out to sea, but that is not set in stone. Uh, and you see that on the European ensemble members as well. Now, just about all of the Euro members that do um, develop the storm, uh, again, kind of pull it north, not really any into that Bahama and uh, Florida idea like the GFS. But uh, then we do run into the other problem. Some of these members, again, try to keep it just a relatively north track. Uh, some, again, even kind of curving it back towards uh, the United States a little bit here or into Atlantic Canada. Um, so, again, 
you know, we got we got a lot of time to go here. So right now, promising trends for sure, but nothing set in stone. Uh, and you're going to want to come back for the latest updates every day uh, as we learn a little bit more about what will be eventually Ernesto and likely Hurricane Ernesto, uh, probably even major Hurricane Ernesto at some point in its life cycle. All right, latest spaghetti models as well here I'll show you. Uh, you'll notice most of them, again, kind of a little bit closer to the European track-wise through the Northern Antilles then towards Puerto Rico. But we do have a couple that move it to the south like the GFS did. And again, that's a very real possibility. Uh, already a very healthy wave, and it's got plenty of time to go here before ever even getting to the Caribbean. Uh, so, you know, we could, we could see a stronger storm for sure. And uh, a lot of our models are indicating that. Look at the general intensity guidance on this storm. Uh, most of them bring this into hurricane status. Some of them get it close to major hurricane status. Uh, so that's another part of the forecast we will have to watch. Generally gradual uh, strengthening over the next uh, four to seven days. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's something that's probably going to happen here. And I feel pretty confident that we'll see at least a hurricane out of this. I think maybe even a major hurricane again at some point. And one big reason for that is this. Look at the ocean uh, sea surface temperatures here. Anytime you see these yellow colors or above, that indicates it is favorable for development. Once you get into those orange colors, it's very favorable. And once you get into the red and purples and the pinks on the map, yeah, that's explosive potential for development with these hurricanes that form. Uh, and I'm looking at you, Gulf of Mexico. We've been spared relatively from any big time storm in the Gulf so far this hurricane season. Uh, but again, we got a way to go. We got to get all the way through October before being able to say that we're probably good. Um, and the Gulf is just a bathtub that is getting warmer and warmer by the weeks uh, and is just waiting for the right storm to move on in. So, uh, you know, a, a bit of a sketchy look out there. But even into the Caribbean, sure, we had barrel move through. That cooled it down a little, but we've still got plenty of colors up to 30 degrees Celsius here uh, just south of Puerto Rico where this storm could track. So, uh, you know, explosive uh, conditions here for tropical development. All right, now how about the long run? What is on the horizon here in the tropics? Well, this is uh, one of our climate models that does an all right job here in the long run. And without getting super into the meteorology here, basically just look at it as purple is favorable for tropical development. Uh, red is a little less favorable. And I guess to tell you a little bit more, purple just indicates divergence aloft in the atmosphere. So that means uh, the wind is diverging or spreading apart. Think about a ballerina. Uh, whenever she goes into a twirl, again, she's kind of tight. But then whenever she spreads out to kind of slow down, uh, that's diverging. And uh, what will happen because of that divergence at the surface, air will have to fill that space for the air leaving above it. Uh, and we get a rising motion uh, and that generally creates thunderstorms. Uh, and, um, you know, that's generally a pretty big key for hurricanes out here in the Atlantic. So we continue this ahead into time. This is, uh, we'll even just go ahead and move this away. This is going into um, about two weeks from now. So this is the week of August uh, 24th. Um, so again, about two weeks from today, you'll notice the main development region is primed up and ready to go. We've got plenty of divergence aloft here uh, that is going to allow for these waves coming off of Africa to likely maintain themselves. Uh, and that could stay that way through the end of the month and potentially even into September. You'll notice as we get to September, uh, look at the Caribbean now coming to life, potentially uh, promoting some tropical development. And that could stay that way for a while as much of the Atlantic, again, kind of during prime hurricane season here, uh, is open for business. So that's something we're going to want to watch, and the experts are also watching it, and they're pointing out, uh, yeah, there's a chance for tropical development, not only going into the middle of the month, again, you'll notice uh, that bullseye where likely Ernesto is to be, also the small potential for tropical development into the Gulf uh, and Bay of Campeche, uh, but also towards the end of the month, just about the entirety of the Atlantic here from the Gulf to the main development region off the coast of Africa and into the middle of the Atlantic could see uh, higher chances of tropical development. So uh, it's going to it's gonna be a long one here probably for the rest of the season. And again, I will keep you updated and posted here. So come back every day uh, for morning and evening videos. Now, uh, I do have a bit of a busy week coming up, so there will probably be a couple days I don't have any evening videos. Uh, and then a week from Monday, school starts. So uh, we'll see uh, kind of how that messes with the evening video portion of things. But no matter what, at least come back for the morning videos. Those will definitely continue uh, for the long haul. So, uh, again, I appreciate y'all hanging in there. Have a great rest of your Saturday evening. Uh, go out there and enjoy it if you can. And I will see you all tomorrow.